Ranger. fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Hayo Silver, away! With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. It was late afternoon of a day in 1867. The driver of the stagecoach, nearing Trinkle City, had no reason to fear a holdup. But suddenly... or something? I'll ask the questions. Throw your guns down. On the other side. Your rifle, too. Your passenger, what's her name? Why, uh, I don't just rightly know. She's from back east, you heard. You're lying. Let's have her name or you'll taste lead. Don't you dare hurt the driver. My, my name is Naomi Courtright. That's her. Grab her. Look, Tonto, they were shots. Look like outlaws still there, Kim. A woman screamed. Come on, Silver. Hurry up. I can't get this door open. There. You've got company. Get on your horse. Get ready to empty, Al Hoots. Here come two more. Let them go for the moment, Tonto. See if the young woman's hurt. No, you don't, mask man. This lady's been through enough. I'm going to protect her if I have to do it with my bare fists. Would we have driven those men away if we didn't want to help her? Well, I guess you're right. You don't act like an outlaw. You're masked. You're with those horrible men. Well, don't be frightened. I want to help you. What happened? Well, I... I don't understand it. First, those men demanded my name. Then they tried to abduct me. They were complete strangers. If I could think of some reason... Yep. As soon as I knowed she was Naomi Courtright, they tried to grab her. That's strange. Do you mind telling me why you were going to Trinco City? Not at all. I'm a school teacher. I'm replacing the present teacher they have there, a man named Craig Gordon. I see. Possibly Mr. Gordon doesn't want to be replaced. On the contrary, Mr. Gordon asked to be replaced. He's going to Europe for further study. Do you know him? No, I never heard of him until I was given this assignment. I'm all right. Mr. Gordon had nothing to do with this. He's just the nicest man you'd ever want to meet. You're from the East, Miss Courtright. Do you have any enemies there? None that I know of. Do you carry gold in stagecoach? No gold, no nothing, Engine. Just a couple of boxes of provision. Are you carrying anything valuable? I'm a school teacher. School teachers accumulate spiritual, not material wealth. I see. One more question. Can either of you describe these men? Well, I'm afraid I can't. I, I was too frightened. Well, I didn't get a good look at the other, Umbre. But the one who's holding a six gun on me was tall and dark. Oh, uh, by the way, he had a scar right across his forehead. Sounds like might be Dan Glick, came with me. Glick is wanted further south for a number of bank robberies. He may have come north where he isn't known. But why would a bank robber abduct me? I don't know, Miss Courtright. We'll try to find out. Driver, I'd suggest that you and Miss Courtright report this incident to the sheriff. Tonto, you accompany the stagecoach. Learn what you can in town. We'll meet later at the crossroads. I'm going to try and follow the men who stopped you.
right, ma'am. This is Trinko City. Reckon you're near me caught right. Why, yes, yes, I am. I'm Liz Powell. I run one of the best boarding houses in town. Don't let anybody tell you different. The professor wanted me to come and meet you. He said he had to send his apologies. Got all messed up packing his books and stuff, I guess. It's awfully nice of you to be here, Mrs. Powell. Well, not nice at all, just good business. Don't want you to stay anywhere else but my place. There's your bag, miss. Well, that sure is some pretty traveling bag. Thank you. I'll ask the driver to send it around. That lazy critter? You wouldn't see it again in a week. Come on, what are we waiting for? You go to see Sheriff, miss. Sheriff, what about? A little trouble we run into, Liz. I'm going to report it pronto. What happened? I'll tell you about it as we walk along. After riding a considerable distance away from the stagecoach, the two outlaws drew rein to discuss the situation. Well, you sure messed that up, Devlin. What do you mean I messed it up? You were mighty anxious to get away. You should have shot her while you had the chance. Look, the boss said abductor. He didn't say shoot her, Glick. There's no use arguing. What do we do now? Well, it'll be dark soon. We can call on the boss. Better go back to town separately so as not to arouse suspicion. Don't you think one of us better nose around town, see what they intend to do about the stagecoach holdup? That's a good idea. You do that, Devlin. The driver might have recognized this. Yeah. Get going. Glick, on your feet. What do you want, masked man? Why did you try to abduct Naomi Courtright? I never heard of her. Maybe a few days in jail will refresh your memory. A masked man taking me to jail? That's a bluff if I ever heard one. You'll find out soon enough. All right, let's go. Hold it, Glick. Let me see you from Crossroad, Kimisabe. What did you learn in town, Tano? Trinko City Bank had much gold dust in vault. Well, that would explain Glick's presence. But what has that to do with the girl? He won't talk. Him maybe protect somebody. That's likely, Tano. Glick and his pal may be working for someone. Why do you think that, Kimisabe? Well, if they were working alone, they would have no reason to ask Naomi Courtright her name. Keep him covered, Tano. I want you to take Glick into town. I'll write a note to the sheriff. Where is Naomi staying? Her taken to boarding house by a lady named Mrs. Powell. I'm going to Mrs. Powell's. With the other outlaw at large, Naomi may still be in danger. Uh, you go now. Tonto had realized that he could not take his prisoner through town without a commotion. He was surprised and pleased, therefore, when, at the edge of town, he saw the sheriff riding toward him. He turned his prisoner and the Lone Ranger's note over to the sheriff. I've heard about this Glick. Got some reward notices on him. I've also heard about the man who wrote this note. Didn't know either of them were operating in my territory. Well, you'll get nothing from me. Maybe you'll change your mind after you've been in a cell for a few days on short rations. Tonto saw Glick nod to a man nearby. Suspecting that this might be Glick's accomplice, Tonto resolved to trail him. While Tonto followed, Devlin entered an apparently deserted house in Trinco City. Ah, Mr. Devlin.
Where have you been? Where's Glick? In Glick's in jail. What? I was on my way over here and I saw the sheriff and an Indian taking him in. Glick in jail? Did anyone follow you here? No. Sit down. An Indian? Was he one of the men who prevented the abduction? Yeah. I guess you know we messed that up then, eh? Of course I know. I saw the woman when she arrived. Why didn't you shoot her? Well, I... I remember you once saying that brain over brawn... Was... Brain over brawn and firearms. Quite right, Mr. Devlin. But there are exceptions to the rule. Exceptions? How are we to know about exceptions? You told us to get the girl without running into any trouble. Well, we ran into trouble. Tell me, why did you want us to get the girl? A fair question, Mr. Devlin. I shall tell you. A few years ago, I was a professor at an Eastern college. I was brilliant. So brilliant that I resented having to drum commonplace facts into the doltish minds of the student body. One day, I was interrupted in my work by one of these students. She did an unpardonable thing. All my life, I had hated clumsiness. A stupid woman spilled ink all over my accounting bedroom, which I was writing. I lost my temper and struck her. There was an inquiry. It was discovered that I had embezzled school funds. Had been for years, in fact. It was sort of a hobby. Far more exciting than the routine teaching, because I had to match my wits against experts. When it all came out, of course, I was dismissed. I tried unsuccessfully to find another position, then came west. Since I was already branded a criminal, I decided to turn to a life of crime. I made my plans with care and changed my name to Craig Gordon. I forged degrees from a European university. Then I decided where my first crime was to take place. A prosperous community with a sound basis for its financial wealth. And the rest you know, Mr. Devlin. How I accepted the menial position of teacher at the grammar school. How I crawled and humbled myself in order to gain the confidence of the town's leading citizens and their dreary little brats. How, meanwhile, I contacted you and Mr. Glick and acquired, under a false name, this abandoned house so conveniently close to the bank. <laughs> that was a smart trick, Professor. And now, Mr. Devlin, you should be able to give me the reason for my disposing of Miss Cartwright. No, I'm not sure that I do, unless... Miss Cartwright is the stupid young woman I struck. You saw her this afternoon. I did. And the jig's up. No, the jig is not up. She didn't see me. If she had, I would have been discredited. Out of all the school teachers, they had to send her. Yes, quite an unfortunate coincidence. Maybe you shouldn't have asked for a replacement. Ah, vital element of my plan. You see, I've already established the fact that I'm leaving Trinco City. After the robbery, I'll, uh, I'll be able to go without even arousing the slightest suspicion. But for the short time that I'll be here, I must avoid having Miss Cartwright see me. For if she does, <laughs> it will prove most unfortunate for her. What about Glick? Well, there's no cause for alarm. Mr. Glick won't talk. There's too much money involved. But the question arises, however, who are the masked man and the Indian? The masked man? Yes. I heard a few people say the girl was saved by a masked man and an Indian. Whatever the masked man's motives, his involvement may work in our favor. Uh, a word or two dropped here and there after the robbery, and the suspicion will fall on him and his Indian companion. And another thing, the sheriff will never expect a robbery with Glick in jail. You intend to pull the job right away then, Professor, huh? The bank is ripe for plucking, Mr. Devlin. Its vault now contains $250,000 in gold dust. A quarter of a million. We'll be able to live on easy street the rest of our lives, eh? When do we start? Let me see. The tunnel is now two feet beneath the floor of the bank vault. Shouldn't take you more than an hour to break through. I can do that easy. You got the blasting powder all set? It's over there. And the fuse? Got it. Seven o'clock, Mr. Devlin. Must be dark outside. Complete the tunneling. We'll enter the vault at nine o'clock tonight. You're coming, Professor? No, I have to finish packing my things. But I'll return in ample time for the breakthrough. Oh, I just thought of something, Professor. If the masked man and the Indian get too nosy, we can trap them, slug them, put them in the tunnel. When the bank blows up, they'll be found there dead. The sheriff will figure they tried to rob the bank and were unsuccessful. Huh? An excellent idea, Mr. Devlin. How clever of you to have thought of it. Yes, an excellent idea. A masked man and an Indian to keep you company. Keeping to the back streets, the Lone Ranger went to Mrs. Powell's rooming house. 
the shade to Naomi's room being up, he tapped on the window and gained admittance. He questioned her exhaustively, seeking some clue to her attempted abduction. You're certain you didn't recognize anyone in town this afternoon? No one. And you or your family have no connection with anyone in the banking business? Do you think Glick will say anything? We may eventually. Meanwhile, his accomplice is at large, a danger to you and a menace to the community. You need to take Glick to jail. See men nod to him. Follow him to deserted house. Deserted house? That sounds like a hideout. But this place not look like hideout. That's strange. Where is this house? Across alley from bank. Near the bank? We'd better go there and investigate. You wear disguise, Kimasami? Yes, Tonto, I should. There's no telling what we may encounter. I'll be out in a moment. Tonto may have found the outlaw's hideout. Is there anything I can do? The West is growing, Naomi. It needs more teachers of your caliber to run its new schools. More will come out when they learn they can settle here in safety. So just be careful till we learn more about this. I'll do whatever you say. Good. Who is it? It's Liz. Liz Powell. Well, what do you want? Well, I want to come in, of course. Well, just a moment. Well, suffering bear cats. You'd think there was somebody still after you, the way you're barricading yourself in here. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still a little upset, I suppose. Oh, shucks, woman. Don't let these men folks upset you. No telling what those hoot owls were doing this morning, but whatever it was, it was a mistake. Why, who'd want to harm a pretty little bird like you? I can't imagine who would. Just wanted to tell you I'm going up the way a piece to visit a friend, in case you need anything. No, no thanks, I'm fine. Have you seen the professor yet? No, I haven't. Well, that's funny. It's getting late and he's leaving town tonight. Oh? Well, I have a lot of things to talk over with him before he leaves. About the children's studies and his classes and... Well, if he ain't shown up by now, maybe you better go over and see him yourself. Sounds kind of important like to me. Well, I... I don't know, I... What's eating you, child? You're not afraid of a broken-down professor, are you? No, of course not. I haven't even met him yet. Well, then you run over and see him yourself. You know how professors are. They're all attached. <laughs> Perhaps he's forgotten all about you. Does he live near here? Yes, just two doors down, little brown house that's back in the road. Well, I don't suppose there'd be any harm in that. Well, of course not. Well, I gotta be going. I'll see you later. Professor Gordon? Yes, who is it? I I'm the new teacher, Professor, Naomi Cortwright. Uh, I'm Miss Cortwright. Come in, please. Professor Gordon? Forgive me, Miss Cortwright, but I'm still dressing. I'll be out in a moment. Well, perhaps I should come back at another time. Not at all, my dear. As a matter of fact, I was just getting ready to pay you a visit before I left. Oh, well, I I thought you'd forgotten about me. Uh, forgotten you? <laughs> Never. Uh, there's so much we must talk about before I go. Well, that's why I came over here, Professor Gordon. I, I'm i sorry I couldn't have spent more time learning how you teach your pupils. Uh, yes, it is unfortunate. But uh, my traveling schedule suddenly changed, and I couldn't arrange it. Uh, oh, uh, I heard you experienced a rather frightful mishap arriving in, in Trinco City. Yes, it was terrible. But a masked man helped me. In fact, his Indian friend thinks he's located the outlaw's hideout near the bank. Their hideout? Well, uh, perhaps we should notify the sheriff. Well, I think the masked man would do so if he thought it necessary. I feel a little uneasy over that pair. They sound like outlaws themselves. Oh, no, Professor, they're good. Why, why, they're no more outlaws than, than you. Aren't they, Miss Cartwright? Why? Why, you're not Professor Gordon, you're... you're... <coughs> A lot of good it will do you now that you know. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto silently examined the abandoned house. It certainly seems like a deserted house, Tonto. Possibly he came through here to cover his tracks. Kimisari! back 
soon they left the candle burning. Go up and close the panel. We'll surprise them. All right, breach. Him man me trail from jail. Him friend of Glick. Keep him covered, amigo, while I see where this tunnel goes. Just as I think. This tunnel go beneath the bank. Already this gringo have saw his way through the floor into the bank. Are you the one who helped Glick try to kidnap Miss Courtright? I don't know anybody by the name of Glick. I think you lie. I think also you work for someone else besides Senor Glick. I don't know what you're talking about. Take him to the sheriff. I will remain here in case another one show up. He's here, my friend. We're glad to see you, Professor. Drop your guns, both of you. Or Miss Courtright gets a bullet in the head. Collect the firearms. He's sure a nosy Mexican. His curiosity will be short-lived. For the time being, Mr. Devlin, tie them up. Get over on the floor. You, Indian, get over there. Two bags of gold dust and plenty more where that came from. That blasting powder at the hinges of the vault door sure did the trick. I used so little it hardly made a sound. Put them in the buckboard, Mr. Devlin. You will not get away with it, senor professor. You think not, my friend? Then perhaps you don't know how carefully I have planned. There are many things that you have overlooked. Your accomplice, Gleek, for one. He is in jail. Sooner or later, he may talk. Stay where you are, Indian. Now, as for Mr. Glick, he's a minor problem. Tomorrow, when the robbery is discovered, the entire town will flock over to the bank. In the meantime, I'll slip quietly over to the jail. When the sheriff returns, he'll find Glick dead shot from the window of his prison cell. What about this tunnel? They will surely find it. And if they do, they'll find the bodies of a Mexican and an Indian. To all appearances, double-crossed by the rest of the gang. Two good reasons to throw the sheriff off my trail. What you gonna do about Miss Cordright? She'll be taken down to the river and drowned. Her body will be weighted with stones. So you will stop at nothing, eh, senor? Absolutely nothing. You have another accomplice. If uh, he is caught... I have overlooked nothing. I'll pick up the rest of the gold. That'll be fine, Mr. Devlin. Devlin, look out! <laughs> Untie Miss Cordright, Tonto. Then we'll see about Devlin. Put him in the back cell. If you need more evidence, Sheriff, I'm sure Devlin will be glad to provide it. There should be enough to jail a professor for years. A school teacher turning out to be a dead blame crook trying to rob the bank. I don't understand it. His loss is Trinco City's gain. You have a fine new schoolmistress to replace him. That's right. And happy we are to have you too, Miss Courtright. The city will certainly be a lot better off for the change. But can you imagine all this going on right before my very eyes without me knowing a thing about it? Why, if it hadn't been for the masked man, well, he's gone. I wonder who he is. I can tell you that, Miss Courtright. He's the Lone Ranger. Hello, Silver! horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Hayo Silver, away! With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. As settlers along the frontier moved further westward, the temporary homes they left behind gradually returned to the earth, to the small animals and the vines and the wind. Occasionally, however, another sort of occupant took over. Then for a night, 
The shack would belong to the drifter, the man without plan or purpose, who had come out of nowhere and was going nowhere. Sometimes, pleased with his luck, he might decide to stay on for a while. Nothing wrong with that. And yet, in the raw, crude early days of the West, a man's whole life might hang on just such a simple decision. No sign of Leo's horse. I thought you told him to be here at sunrise, George. I did. I hate a man who's late for an appointment. He's probably on his way. Relax. Yeah. It's chilly. Are you sure the shack is empty? Earl, will you please stop worrying? We both checked the place yesterday, didn't we? Well, check it again. Here comes Leo now. Well, we were beginning to wonder whether or not you'd honor us with your presence. Well, I got here as soon as I could. I hope the governor didn't hear you leave. The way that man sleeps, he wouldn't hear a cannon if it went off in his ear. Oh, to sleep like that. Oh, to have a conscience like that. Yeah. Well, let's get these arrangements over with. We don't want him to wake up and find his bodyguard gone. Everything is still all right, isn't it? I mean, you haven't given him any reason to suspect you. Look, this is the first vacation the man's had since he was appointed governor of this territory. He's too busy having a good time to suspect anybody of anything. He can fish all day if he wants, go hunting, riding, almost anything Doesn't he, he wants. Doesn't he ever worry about territorial affairs? Well, he figures his capable assistant can handle anything that comes up. That's you, brother. Take a bow. Well, why shouldn't he trust me? I can do the work as well as he can. Maybe not as honestly. That's not funny, Leo. It seems to me I've cut both of you in on everything I've done. You're not exactly Lily White, you know. We're jealous, Earl. We're mad because the thought never occurred to us to take over a whole territory. Nobody's stopping you if you want to get out. I don't want to get out. Then keep a civil tongue in your head. If it weren't for me, you'd still be back east digging ditches. I was the one who put you on the governor's payroll. Yes, and that goes for you, too. The governor didn't want a bodyguard. I talked him into it. Oh, stop it. You never did anything in the world out of the kindness of your heart, Earl. You got in touch with me because you wanted me to kill a man. Well, since that man happens to be Governor Taggart, you saw that I got a job close to him. All right. Well, now we're here to discuss prices and nothing else. So please spare me your lecture. Bravo! Here, here. You keep your mouth shut. I'm glad to know where I stand with you, Leo. From now on, this is just a business venture. Good. I believe we agreed on $500 now and 500 more when the job is done. We did. But the price has gone up since then. What? You heard me. I want a thousand now and five thousand when he's dead. You're out of your mind. I can't afford that kind of money. Earl, who do you think you're kidding? With Taggart gone, you'll be the big boss until Washington appoints a new governor. Maybe they'll appoint you. But even if they don't, you'll be assistant to the new man. And by the time he gets here, you'll have everything organized the way you want it. You can squeeze this territory till it screams. No. It's too much money. Suit yourself. Wait. All right. A thousand now. When are you going to do the job? The governor and I are leaving today to go back to Capital City on the 10 o'clock stage. Just the two of us. Just the two of you? What about the driver? That's why I chose the morning stage. The driver happens to be a man named Cochran, an old friend of mine. I met him in a prison in New York before he broke out. Well, when I told him I'd have to let the law know where he was unless he helped me, he saw the light right away. You have such uh, reasonable friends, too. Anyway, the road crosses Indian River about three miles beyond Batesville. 
I'll do the job there. We'll make it look as though the horses ran onto the bridge too fast. Coach plunged into the river and Taggart was drowned. Cochran and I can always say we swam to the bank after trying to save the governor. Any marks they find on him, any blows around the head will look like the results of the fall. Purely accidental. You'll contact me afterward. You bet I will. Time I was getting back to the hotel. Any more questions? No. Good. I'll see you in a couple of days. Shots come from that direction, Kimisami. We'd better investigate. Come on, Silver. He must have heard everything. I told you to. Listen. Somebody's coming. Let's get out of here. Badly hurt, Tonto. Me go after man who shot him, Kimisabi? We'll go after him later. Right now, this old fellow needs attention. I'll take him into that shack. You get the horses. Well, I gotta get a lot of through. No. No! Don't shoot! Don't, don't shoot! Take it easy, old timer. Everything's all right now. They're... They're gonna kill him. I, I must get there. Warn him. Who are they gonna kill? I... I was listening. I heard everything they said. There were three of them. Must... must tell... He's still alive, Tonto. But he should have medical attention immediately. We passed Doctor's house on outskirts of Batesville, Kim at me. Yes. I'll go back there. You stay here with the old fellow. Do what you can for him. And listen carefully to anything he says. Obviously, someone's life is in great danger. Every moment may count. Me understand. Well, you're the one who wanted to come back oh, here. Look. Last. Well, at least we know he's not a lawman. His pal is still in there. Maybe that bullet didn't kill the old man. What if he talks? Pull yourself together. Everything is ruined, George. Nothing's ruined. We've just been a little careless. I think we can fix that. <laughs> yes, yes, I think we can. I never did hear of a dead witness testifying in court. It's more like it, brother. I knew I should never let you talk me into this game, Doc. It didn't seem quite fair for a young fellow like you to take advantage of a poor broken... Why, you healthy old hypochondriac, this is the first checker game I've won off of you in two years. Yeah, it's no use trying to soothe my wounded feelings. And I guess I'll go on home now and kind of practice up a bit. <laughs> Say, uh, where's my pills? Right here. Excuse me, Sheriff. Sure. Yes? Who are you, and what's the idea of the mask? Don't draw, Sheriff. I'm glad you're here. Are you the doctor? Yes, I am. I need your help. There's an emergency case about two miles from here. I suppose one of your outlaw pals stopped a bullet. I'm no outlaw, Sheriff. I found an old man. He's badly hurt. He's been shot in the back. Well, if you're telling the truth, why didn't you bring this mysterious old man in town? I consider his condition too critical. Well, I... There's no time to argue. Is that your bag? Yes, but I... Now, hold on, mister. Sheriff? Before he lost consciousness, the old man spoke of a murder plot against someone's life. It might be a good idea if you came along. After you, gentlemen. Please, hurry. Well, all I gotta say is, mister, you'd better be telling the truth. Is 
this the place you left him? Yes, but... What's the matter, mister? Well, Tonto's horse is gone. Who's Tonto? The friend I left with the old man. Are you fixing to change the story you told us? No, Sheriff, I told the truth. Please come inside. Tonto? I don't like this. Doctor, here's your patient. Tonto! Well, Doc? Mister? How is he? You said this man was alive when you left, that he had been shot in the back. That's right. He tried to tell us something about a murder plot. That's impossible. What? This man's also been shot through the head. He must have died instantly. Get your hands up. Shot through the head? Then the killer must have returned after I left. Go on, get him up. I don't know what your game is, but I'm placing you under arrest until you give me some straight answers. Listen to me, Sheriff. Something must have happened to my friend. There's been a murder here, mister. And I'm holding you as a material witness. Doc, get his guns. Right. And we'll take a look at that face of his. Sorry, Doctor, but I must find out what happened to Tonto. Plus your gun over here, Sheriff. Why, you crazy Al Hudo. You want me to shoot it out of your hand? Why, Thunder, you wouldn't. Your gun, Sheriff. Thank you. Now I'll be on my way. The old fellow possessed important information. Still sticking to that cock and bull story about a murder plot, huh? Yes. The man or men who captured Tonto already murdered once. I'm going to try and prevent another killing. Mister, I'm ordering you to turn Doc loose. All right, Sheriff. Whatever you say. Out of the way, Doc! I'll never get him at this distance. That's the fastest horse I ever saw. Gee, I'm sorry I messed it up for you, Sheriff. Oh, that's all right, Doc. I'm not licked yet. If I could only make it up some way. There is, Doc. I'm swearing you in right now as my deputy. Good. We'll go after him together. I'll see that masked man behind bars if it's the last thing I ever do. After his escape, the Lone Ranger rode in a wide circle, hoping to pick up Tonto's trail. Meanwhile, in a hotel room in Batesville, Governor John Taggart was preparing for the long journey to Capital City. Don't forget these, Governor. Oh, thanks, Leo. But what did I tell you about calling me Governor? Sorry, Mr. Jones. <laughs> That's better. I tell you, this has been a vacation to remember. No papers to sign, no people to see, no petitions, no complaints. I've already decided to return here next year. Yes, sir. The coach is ready downstairs now. I put the other baggage aboard. <laughs> you seem anxious to get started, Leo. No. No, I... Well, I hope it hasn't been too boring for you. I told Earl it was ridiculous for me to have a bodyguard, but you know how he is once he gets his mind set on anything. Yes, sir. I know. In a way, I'll be glad to get back, though. I have a lot of faith in Earl, and yet he's such an old woman about a lot of things, afraid to take chances. Let me help you, sir. What do you suppose Earl is doing right now? I wonder... I'll ask you once more, Indian. Where did the masked man go? How much did he hear? Stubborn, aren't you? Well, when I get through with you, you'll talk. Did you talk to Leo? Did you tell him what happened? No. No. Well, why do you think I sent you to town? Suppose the old drifter spilled everything he knew before we had a chance to take care of it. Maybe the masked man didn't go to the law, but he certainly might try to warn Governor Taggart. Governor Taggart? Him in town? There's your answer. What do you mean? Well, use your head, Earl. The masked man and the Indian were in that shack together, weren't they? Yes, but just the same Well, they... if the Indian doesn't know about Taggart, how do you expect his pal to? Yes, you're right. I knew we were safe the minute I rode into Batesville. The masked man had had anything to report, there'd been posses forming all over the place. I even dropped into a couple of cafes. Nobody knows anything. <laughs> We're a lot luckier than we have a right to be, George. I'm glad you didn't bother Leo. I uh, thought you would be. I wonder where the masked man did go. What difference does it make? We're in the clear. The old geezer's dead, and the only other person that knows about the plan is the Indian here. Yes, he does know. Why you plan to kill Governor Taggart? Him good man. Maybe that's his trouble, Indian. Maybe we'd like somebody a little more broad-minded running this territory. Somebody like uh, my brother, for instance. 
Let's not waste any more time, George. It must be nearly 10. It's two minutes after. The stage is on its way now. And as soon as it gets to Indian River, you're the acting governor. Well, I hope Leo and his friend do the job quickly. I've always liked Taggart. Wouldn't want him to suffer any. Taggart probably won't know what hit him. There'd be no reason to suspect his own bodyguard, especially with Leo sitting right beside him. Well, let's be on our way. There'll be a lot of things I'll have to attend to in Capital City. What about the Indian? What do you mean, what about the Indian? Kill him, of course. <laughs> Foolish of me to ask, wasn't it? Well, Indian, say your prayers. Put up your hands, both of you. I picked up your trail about 20 minutes ago, Tonto. Let me find out Governor Taggart, man, I'm going to kill. So I heard. Untie my friend. We not have much time, Kimasabe. Governor Taggart leave on 10 o'clock stagecoach. Killer's on stagecoach, too. Man called Leo, plan to kill him at Indian River. I know a shortcut. We can get... Good work, Tonto. These men brothers, Kimasabe, them Earl and George Rand. After you leave cabin, them come back. Kill old man, take me away. That's what I tried to tell the sheriff, but he wouldn't listen. Sheriff? He came along when I brought the doctor. When we found the old man dead, he wanted to hold me for questioning. I had a bit of trouble getting away. I want you to tie these men up, Tonto. When I return, we'll take them to Batesville. Where you go now? I think there's just time for me to stop the stagecoach before it reaches the river. Silver! Silver! We'd find him, we follow these tracks. Take cover, Tonto. Come out of there, mask man. You too, engine. Next time, I'll not shoot over your head. It's the sheriff. What we do, Kimasami? Soon stagecoach reach Indian River. There's no time to lose. I have to get out of here somehow. We'll try the possum trick. You ready? Uh -huh. Not a chance, Sheriff. You'll have to come after us. I gave you a fair warning, mister. There. Ah! Kimasami! Wait, you not kill me! All right, engine, raise your hands and stand up slow. You not shoot. Just remember you're covered, engine, and don't try any tricks. Now toss your gun on the ground. Let's see if those two are still alive, Doctor. Them not dead. He's right, Sheriff. I don't get this. Sorry, Sheriff. You'll understand later. Why, you? Those two murdered the old fellow in the shack. Tonto will tell you exactly what happened. Right now, I have a job to do. Where's he going? Him try to prevent murder of Governor Taggart. Governor Taggart? You tie up men on ground. Me tell you whole story while you do that. What's the matter with you, Leo? Ever since we left Batesville, you've seemed uh, preoccupied. Now, have I? No reason for it, Governor. Not expecting anyone to make an attempt on my life, are you? What? Well, you're my bodyguard. I thought perhaps you were keeping your eye out for highwaymen. Well, you never can tell what might happen, can you, sir? Oh, oh. Come, Leo, who'd ever want to kill me? Oh, I remember this stretch of country. Uh, let me see, don't we come to a river pretty soon? Yes, sir. What was the name of that again? They call it Indian River.
Come out of there. Keep your hands up. What's the meaning of this outrage? If it's money, you're out. I don't want your money, Governor. All I'm interested in is seeing that you remain alive. Come down from there, driver. So now you wild hoots are operating in broad daylight. A mask isn't always the sign of a crook. Take yourself, for instance. You don't wear one. You'd better explain yourself, mister. Why did you stop us? Because these men were going to kill you when the stage reached Indian River. You're out of your mind. It's all over, Leo. You see, there was an old man hidden in the shack when you and the Rand brothers made your plans. He overheard every word you said. Later, he was murdered. We've already captured Earl and George. You're lying. How does he know about the shack if he's lying? Keep quiet, you fool. You're not going to pull me into a murder rap. Look, mister, I don't know anything about the old man. Leo said he was going to tell the law that I was wanted for a jailbreaking in New York if I didn't help him kill the governor. He was behind the whole thing. You idiot. Have you heard enough, Governor Taggart? I, I can't believe it. You mean to say Earl was in on this? He was more than just in on it. You might as well know the true story. Earl hired me for this job. He wanted to take over the territory himself. If there's been any murder, and I haven't had a hand in it. Now, I don't aim to hang for something I didn't do. Earl, a man I trusted. We'll tie these two, Governor. Will you keep them covered? Glad you arrived in time, mister. If I'd had sense enough to believe your story, I might have been able to help you. Then Tonto explained everything. He sure did. When Rand brothers come to, them see sheriffs standing by. Them confess plenty quick. Dr. Barnes has taken them into town. They'll hang for murder. So you're Governor Taggart? Yes, Sheriff. Well, I'm sorry, Governor, that your vacation had to end this way. Well, if it hadn't been for this man, it would have ended in a much worse manner. I don't know how to thank you, mister. Tonto and I were glad to do what we could, Governor. Your administration has always been fair and honest. The West needs more men like you. Now that you're here to take over, Sheriff, Tano and I must be on our way. I left my horse just beyond that ridge. Adios. All right, Buster, inside. So now we've got the whole lot of them. You know, Sheriff, I think that that masked man is the most remarkable person I've ever met. It's a shame he isn't a lawman. Well, he is a lawman in his own way. I always thought the stories about him were legends until the Indian told me different. It might surprise you to know, sir, that you were helped by the Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Hayo Silver! Away! With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. Tumble Rock had been a peaceful town until Ace Broderick arrived and built a cafe and gambling hall. Renegades, ruffians, and thieves followed Broderick to Tumble Rock, and crime ran rampant. As Ace Broderick prospered, he grew even more ambitious. Several months before the local elections, he was already buying votes to put in his own mayor. Only one man stood in the way of his plans, an honest, fearless defender of the law, Sheriff Brooks. It's early in the morning, Sheriff. The place ain't open. Where's Ace Broderick? Right here, Sheriff. You're slipping, Ace. Yeah? This time you bribed the wrong people. Who says so? Two witnesses. They swear you paid them to stuff ballot boxes next month. Started kind of early, didn't you? I don't like that kind of talk, Sheriff. Too bad. You're going to hear more of it. I got the goods on you this time, Ace. There's a fine and a six-month jail sentence goes with it. You know, Sheriff, I've been thinking that one day you and me is going to decide who really runs this town. And this is just as good a day as any. Hold it, Ace. You're not talking to one of your yellow-livered gunmen. You're talking to the law. I make my own laws. So I heard. I don't want any trouble, Ace. 
But I'm taking you in. Maybe. And I'm going to give you a chance to do that. Pete's going to count to three, and we're going to draw and shoot. You can outdraw anybody in town, Ace. Start counting, Pete. Okay, boss. One. You're a killer, Ace. Get ready, Sheriff. Keep counting, Pete. Two. All right. That's the way you want it. Three. The sucker didn't have a chance, did he, boss? What's the matter with you, Pete? Can't you see the boss shot in self-defense? That's right, he drew first. You did the only thing you could have done. Yeah, sure, but what will the hicks around here say? They won't say anything unless you tell them different. Well, not, not me, boss, but... Uh, but I... what? Well, the sheriff has a son, hasn't he? Everybody knows they was close, even though the son went east a couple of years ago. So what? Nothing. Just wonder what he'll do when he hears about this. I do all the wondering around here, remember, Pete? Uh, sure, boss, sure. If his son does come out here to make more trouble, he'll never reach Tumble Rock alive, understand? Tumble Rock on the other side of mountain range, Kimisabe. We'll camp soon and look around town tomorrow. Why you think so much about election in Tumble Rock, Kimisabe? A free and honest election, Tonto, is the very heart of making our American system of government work. Sometimes dishonest politicians steal ballot boxes or use bribes or threats of violence to make people vote for someone they may not like. No, that's not good. Ace Broderick do that? There were rumors that Sheriff Brooks had found such evidence before he died. Come on, Silver! are getting smarter every year. Now you work in relays. Your voice and your face are familiar. Are you Ted Brooks, the sheriff's son? Yes, but I'll do the talking, mister. It's my gun. Put up hands. Turn around. Stage driver wounded, Kimasabe. Oh, it's a terrible thing. It's too bad we couldn't go after those gunmen, but it was more important to stop the stage. Uh, trailing them no good. Ground too hard and rocky. Put that away, Tonto. Uh, he help stage driver. You've been in the East a long time, haven't you? Yeah, too long, I guess. All right, go ahead and shoot. You're mistaken, Ted. We're on your side of the law. Yeah, I don't get it. Who are you? Did your father ever tell you of a masked friend who used special bullets? Does this mean anything to you? Sure, silver. Silver, a big white stallion. Yes, it comes back to me now. The Indian's name is Tonto, and you... <laughs> There's only one man like you in the whole West. You're the Lone Ranger. Welcome back, Ted. Thanks. Do you have any idea who those men were? Yeah, Ace Brodericks. Do you know them? No, but when we pulled into Reed City, they must have spotted me, then trailed me. What does Ace Broderick have against you? Well, after Dad died, I wrote to a group of the town's leading citizens asking for his job. Nobody else wanted it, so they wrote me that letter saying I was hired to fill in until the election. And they enclosed Dad's old badge. Ace is a clever man. Can you handle him alone? Well, that's an offer to help, thanks, but uh, I want to get the goods on him myself. I understand. But if you change your mind and want help, Tonto and I'll be around. Glad to hear it. Where could I find you? We'll keep in touch with Tom Crothers, your dad's old deputy. Me put driver inside. Him hurt bad. For that, Ace's men will have a lot of explaining to do. Be careful, Ted. They're tough. I can be, too. I heard that they were offering you the job, but 
I hope they had more sense than to take it. Well, I know I'm not good enough to fill Dad's shoes, Tom, but I'll do my best. Listen, son, take my advice and get out of here. Get out of here? What do you mean? Look, I buried your father. Helped to dig his grave with my own hands. As fine a man as ever set foot in the West. Honest, decent, God-fearing. He hated killers like Broderick, and he fought him the best he knew how. But he's dead now. And he ain't no use to all of the good folks that loved him. He ain't no use to anybody. And I don't want to see that happen to you, son. I can take care of myself, Tom. You think I'm an old fool, don't you? No, I didn't say that. Yeah, but you were thinking it. Listen, son, there's Ace Broderick's all over the West. Have been and always will be. Fight them? Sure. Just like any other real man would. But just learn to fight them so that win or lose, you live to fight another day. It's all right to be a hero, but... I don't want to be a hero. Did you ever hear anybody call old Tom Carruthers a hero? No. And they never will. Well, I'll keep on fighting those that I can whip, but those that I can't, well, I'll be alive long after they've killed themselves. Look, Tom, his men even tried to bushwhack me just now on my way in. Yeah, so you told me. But have you any proof that they were Broderick's men? They'll have a dozen men in there to prove that they wasn't. Just like those skunks that swore that your father drew first. I just can't let it pass. All right, take him into court. And that crooked lawyer, McGill, will just make a fool out of you. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to see Ace Broderick before you talk me out of it. First your pa, now you. You fool Brookses. I only wish I had their courage. Place ain't open for business yet, mister. Come around tonight. I'm here to see Ace Broderick. Office in the back, but he's busy. Hey, wait, you can't bust in there. I gotta let him know. Which one of you is Broderick? Close the door, Pete. I'm Broderick. Strangers don't usually come in here without knocking. I'm no stranger. My name's Brooks. State your business. I want the two men who tried to bushwhack me this morning. Wrong address, mister. Don't know what you're talking about. No, you had a man tip them off when I left Reed City. Get them in here, I want to talk to them. Nobody's left here all day long. The fact, and we can produce witnesses to back it up. Well, you must be McGill. We're not in court yet, so I'm not interested in witnesses. I want those two men. No man talks to me like that, especially some tenderfoot that thinks... <laughs> Who do you think you're pushing around? Keep your temper, Ace. You keep out of it. I'm gonna teach this tenderfoot a lesson he won't forget. You had enough? Come on, Ace, have some more. I'll get the two men for you. All right, make it fast. They're in there. I keep it locked on the inside. Where's the key? I'll get it. After I finish with them, you and I have something else to talk about. You're a top man now, but it ain't healthy. It ain't healthy. Hurry up. I will. You shot right through the desk. Have you gone crazy? I heard a shot. Close that door. Anyone outside? No. Well, lucky you only wounded him. The shot knocked him out, but he looks like he'll be all right. Oh, it was self-defense. It's no good, Ace. You've used that too often. Pete saw it, and Joe backed me up. It won't work, I tell you. Too many people know about this man. If they heard about this, they might get sore enough to take the law into their own hands. I don't follow you. If you'd killed him, you'd stand a good chance of decorating the end of a rope. All right, get me out of it, then. What are we going to do? Anybody see him come in here? Don't think so. The street outside's still deserted. Then he didn't come in here. Huh? We know nothing about this man. We never heard of him, never saw him. No one has been in here all morning. Is that clear? Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess so. What's your idea? Bandage this man. Tie and gag him and put him in the cellar until after dark. Then take him out to a line shack somewhere and leave him there until we decide how to get rid of him for good. Pete, lock the front door and get Joe to help you. He's upstairs.
Later that night, the Lone Ranger and Tonto called on Tom Crothers to ask about Ted. I tell you, I think they murdered young Ted. But you can't prove it. Oh, I can't prove anything unless I find the body. I'm going to look over that cafe and then have a talk with Ace. I sure hope you find out what happened to that boy. You know, he was a tough coyote and a real chip off of the old block. We'll do our best, Tom. We'd better go out the back way. Ah. An engine just handed me this for you. Who? An engine. talk to you about the disappearance of Ted Brooks. I'm waiting in your office. I didn't see anyone go in. Maybe they climbed through the window. If they did, I'll take care of them. Come on. Who are you? Why the mask? I'll ask the questions, Roderick. How'd you get in here? I came in through the window, but I'll leave through the door when I'm ready. When I throw you out. You didn't do that when Ted Brooks came here. Who? Brooks. You want me to spell it for you? Oh, you mean the uh, fellow old Tom was asking about? You said you didn't know him. Never saw him. You deny shooting him from here? Of course. You shoot from the desk drawer all the time, for practice, I suppose. And yet you only made one bullet hole. I did that months ago, cleaning my gun. Very interesting. And that's an oil stain you couldn't get out. Looks like you scrubbed it again today. Maybe. Or is that where Ted Brooks lost blood after being shot? I've had about enough out of you. I'm leaving, Broderick, but I'll call again after I find Ted Brooks. Boy. Keep your head, Ace. You're a smart man, McGill. There's no need for gunplay. Just get out of here, stranger. Give me that gun. No, the other hand. Your partner has a quick temper. You'll find your gun outside. Hold it, Ace. Get Joe in here. What for? I want him to watch that masked man, see what he's up to. In a moment of anger, Roderick probably shot young Brooks and then disposed of him. Sure, disposed. But how? They couldn't have taken young Brooks out in broad daylight. Someone would have seen them. They could have waited until dark, taken Ted out, and then hidden him somewhere. Yeah, but where? I don't know yet, but I have a plan to find out. All right, shoot. In the morning, Tonto and I will search the countryside for any sign of Ted. That'd be plenty hard to do in daytime and not be seen by Broderick's men. I want them to see us. You want them to see you? Trail be plenty hard to find in this rocky country. Take long time. I know, Tonto. Now, here's my plan. Oh, hello, Joe. What'd you find out? Sit down, McGill, and listen. Remember Pete said an Indian brought that note the night the masked man was here? Yeah? They in cahoots? I lost him last night after they left the deputy sheriff's office. This morning, I picked him up and followed him all over the hills. Joe thinks they're looking for Ted Brooks. Where's Pete? I sent him out after the election posters. As soon as he comes in, send him out with Joe. But what do you want them to do? There's no choice, Ace. That masked man and the Indian must be destroyed before they find evidence to destroy you. Oh, Pete. Yes, the man I want to see. Got to get back to Mr. Broderick. Well, that can wait. Come on inside. Sit down. I'm in a hurry. Pete, the law says that any man conceals the knowledge of a murder can hang just as high as the killer himself. Yeah. Now, if you know that Ace killed young Brooks and you're holding out on me, the judge can sentence you to hang. I don't know nothing. That's a lie. Now, what did you do with the body? Why don't you tell me? You may be able to save your own mech. I heard you had a masked man and a redskin looking for it. That's right. And when they find the body, it'll be just too bad for you. Come in. Oh, I didn't expect you back so soon. Tano has something he wants to show you, Tom. Oh, a badge. Look familiar? Doggone, it sure does. Here, paper, too. What's this? A letter signed by some of the town's leading citizens. 
Oh, I almost forgot about you, Pete. I'm through with you now. You can go. Yeah, yeah, sure. What do we do now? Wait for Ace to make the next move. If our plan works, it should be soon. Remember that Brooks fellow was carrying a badge when he come in here? Yeah, it was his father's badge. What about it? When Joe and I hit him, there was a letter making him temporary sheriff, too. So? Well, the masked man and the redskin must have found Brooks, because I just seen the badge and the letter. What? Where? In the deputy's office. The sheriff had me in there trying to make me talk when the masked man and redskin come in with him. Did you see the letter? Not close, but I saw some of the signatures on it. Well, what about it? If Brooks has been found, he'll talk plenty. Yeah. We gotta know where we stand. You hit him, go out and see if he's still there. And if he is, take care of him and bury the body. How about Joe coming with me? All right, but hurry up. We'll wait for you here. Right, boss. You're right, Kimisabe. Them aces men. They're going out to see if we found Brooks. Can we follow them now? Yes, but we must keep out of sight. What are you doing? I just want to see if he's still alive. Well, it won't be for long. You figure on shooting him here? Why not? There's nobody near enough to hear a gunshot. Right. Hey, what are you doing? Don't move. Drop that gun. You too. Now put up your hands. Time to get their guns and untie Ted. Well, you got here just in time. They're about ready to finish me off. First this sheriff and now this attempt on his son. You may be both hanged for this. Wait a minute, I didn't shoot him. You can't pin it on me. The evidence speaks for itself. When a jury hears Ted Brooks, well, there's nothing more to be said. Oh, yes, there is plenty. We didn't kill the sheriff. It was Ace Broderick did the shooting. Tato, tie their hands behind their backs. Well, what about Sheriff Brooks? Ace drew before the count because the sheriff had the goods on him. Will you put all you know about the sheriff's death and the shooting of his son in writing? Sure, sure. Good. This is one case that Ace Broderick and his lawyer will find hard to beat. Pete and Joe spilled the whole story, naming both of us as killers. What? It's all over town, Ace. Why, the dirty double... The game's up, Ace. Let's get out of here. I can't. I've got too much invested in this town to give up that easily. Though you did the shooting, I may be an accessory after the fact of murder. I'm quitting right now. Oh, no, you're not. Relax. Calm down. That masked man's back of this, I'm sure of it. What are you thinking? If we get rid of the masked man and take care of Brooks, then we get the confessions from the deputy. We've no choice if we want to stay here. Right. So here's what you do. You give yourself up and then tell the sheriff and the masked man. Go back with your friend. The last page of Joe's statement. The doctor's treating Ted now. He'll read it later. Ace Broderick is finished, no matter what. Bill, you're under arrest. I'm giving myself up. Ace told me to tell you to come and get him. Oh, he wants to shoot it out, huh? Can you organize a posse and surround his place? There's not a man in town who'll tangle with Ace, even with a posse. He's right. They're all afraid of what might happen later, if we should lose. Will you deputize me to arrest him? Why, sure. But my friend, Ace Broderick's the best shot I ever saw. Me help, Kimisami? No, Tonto. Tom needs you here. He's waiting for you outside the cafe, masked man. He wants it out in the open where everybody can see. There ain't a living soul out on that street. Stay here. He'll never come back here alive.
your hurry, Ace. Stay where you are. Don't draw, Ace. You're under arrest. Stop it. Stay where you are. Put your hands up, Roderick. I'm turning you in. Come on, on your feet. Well, I wish I knew how to thank you two. You know, with those varmints convicted and put away, Tumble Rock's going to have a real free and honest election. Well, Ted, with Tom's help, you'll take over from here. I'll do my best, mister. We give badge and letter back to town people. Adios. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, deputy. Yeah? What did he mean by a letter and a badge? Oh, you mean that badge and letter that Pete said he saw? Yeah. Belonged to Ted Brooks. No, not them. You see, the masked man had the townspeople make him another badge and a letter. Well, I'll be. You gotta hand it to him. He's smart and he's fast on the draw. Yeah. Who is he, anyway? Well, Ace, you mean to tell me that you don't know who you tangled up with? Who was he? Well, boys, you've been apprehended by none other than the Lone Ranger. Hello, Silver! Be with the Lone Ranger and Tonto same time next week for new dangers in another thrill-packed adventure. The Lone Ranger rides again.